the top stories tonight and why news. Cybercrime agents have arrested three members of a hacker group who were tagged as responsible for illegally obtaining election-related data from the Commission on Elections. The local absentee voting for those who will not be able to cast their votes on May 9, 2022 will begin tomorrow. Instructions on absentee voting have also been released by the Commission on Elections. The Supreme Court denies with finality the appeals challenging the constitutionality of the Anti-Terrorism Act. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has expanded approval of the COVID-19 drug Remdesivir to treat children younger than 12 years old. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, April 26, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Herlene Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. in the news. Authorities arrest three suspected hackers who claimed they can breach the outcome of the 2022 elections. Despite this, the authorities assure that the 2022 elections will not be affected by any hacking activities. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. The Cyber Crime Investigation and Coordinating Center, or CICC, traces the notorious group involved in hacking some government websites, especially the Commission on Elections. On April 24, the agency conducted separate entrapment operations in Laguna and Cavite with the help of the Philippine National Police Anti-Cybercrime Group, or PNP-ACG, after receiving leads. This led to the apprehension of three alleged members of XSOS group, including its mastermind Jeffrey Cruz Limpiado, Joel Adalgar Ilagan, and Adrian De Jesus Martin. CICC Executive Director Undersecretary Cesar Mancao II confirms that the group is connected to Ricardo Argana, a former employee of Smartmatic who is currently at large. Argana allegedly downloaded the files of Smartmatic from their office in Laguna and shared it to Limpiado's group. Pinitreaten nga nila ang Smartmatic at uh, Comelec, kung hindi daw sila pansinin, eh, maglalabas sila ng uh, 60 gig uh, data ng Comelec. Uh, labas doon sa 1 tera na nagkaroon sila. At palagi silang nandoon sa dark web na <coughs> nagkakipag-communicate. Talagang nag-insist na kaya nilang i-manipulate ang resulta ng eleksyon at umingi ng uh, bayad. Aside from hacking the Smartmatic system, the suspects have allegedly caused a disruption of the Commission on Elections website, hacking of Dampacor website, credit cards, other online transactions, and local commercial websites. Cases were already filed against the suspects, particularly violations of Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. The CICC and PNPACG, however, disclosed that the suspects failed to completely hack the Smartmatic due to the multi-level protection set on the system. Itong major ang group na talagang persistent, visible dun sa dark web na itong grupo na to nag, nagmamayabang na kaya nila sa statement lang nila yon na kaya pero sa kanila back of their minds manuloko lang talaga sila hindi nila kaya kahit nagkaroon sila na access hanggang third and fourth level lang sila kung sakali man control pa rin talaga ng Smartmatic and uh, Comelec It's really very difficult to uh to uh, access yung uh, system uh, to uh, to cheat the election kailangan mong napakaraming involved na tao and it is next to impossible uh, I, I am assuring the uh, public na based dun sa the, uh, kung paano kami na brief uh, na talagang uh, very uh, the Comelec, on their part, reminds the political candidates of the forthcoming elections to not be deceived by such scam.
Yung mga sinasabi ko noon pa na naglipa na sa buong Pilipinas, may naniningil ng 50 million, may naniningil ng 70 million na hindi na raw po mga kampanya, ipahiga-higa na lang yung kandidato, okay na at mananalo na. Huwag po kayong maniwala sa ganon. Wala pong, there's no such thing as an immediate and quick solution to a problem like a campaign. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Uniformed personnel, government officials and employees and members of the media are set to cast their votes ahead of the May 9 elections as the local absentee voting begins tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections has placed six municipalities in Maguindanao province under Kamala control. Dante Almento tells us why. The Commission on Elections approved 84,357 local absentee voters across the country. These are members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, government employees and members of the media who will perform poll duties during the actual election day. Thus, Commissioner George Irwin Garcia urges absentee voters to exercise their right in the three-day voting period. Huwag niyo pong uh, ibaliwalin itong pagkakataon ito. Tatlong araw po ito, 27, 28, and 29 na kayo ay makakaboto. A total of 93,698 individuals applied for the local absentee voting but 9,341 were disapproved for various reasons such as failure to vote in the past two consecutive elections. Voting hours will be from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 p.m. All you need to do is bring your ID uh, for the red office to identify kung kayo talaga yung nakalista sa listahan na binigay namin sa red office for uh, purposes of media. So yun lang po, makakaboto na po kayo. Members of the media in the National Capital Region will vote at the Comelec Regional Office in Intramuros, Manila. But those in the provinces can cast their votes at the provincial election offices or election offices in municipalities and cities. Meanwhile, members of the AFP, PNP, and other government agencies will vote at their respective office. Local absentee voters will use manual ballots and will vote for national positions only from president to party list. Ito po ay limitado lamang sa national position. Wala pong mga local position na involved. At syempre, manual po ang pagboto po ninyo. And uh, therefore, uh, kayo mismo lahat ang mag-accomplish ng mga balota. At the same time, kayo ang magsisil, magsisilyado ng lahat ng uh, balota sa isang envelope. At yun mismo rin ay isosurrender nyo, bibigay nyo sa head of agency or sa mga member from media sa mismong COMELEC NCR. The counting and canvassing of election returns would be on May 9, 2022, 7 o'clock in the evening at the COMELEC main office. Meanwhile, COMELEC Chairman Saidamin Pangarungan has placed six municipalities in Maguindanao under COMELEC control. These are the towns of Buluan, Dato Udin Sinsuat, Dato Piang, Mangudadato, Pandag, and Sultan Kudarat. The city of Marawi and municipality of Baging, both in Lano del Sur, were also declared under COMELEC control. Under Resolution No. 10757, an area can be placed under COMELEC control if there is current intense political rivalry, incidents of political motivated violence, serious armed threats, among others. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police views that this year's national and local elections will be peaceful than the previous ones. Lea Ilagan explains why. From January 9 to April 24, 2022, the Philippine National Police confirmed eight election-related incidents. This is lower compared to the previous elections in 2019 and 2016. The eight validated election-related incidents include shooting incidents, grave threat, and physical injury that were reported in Regions 1, 3, 9, 10, and Cordillera. Maasa kami ma'am na because of the cooperation na, na rin ng ating community, ng ating mga kandidato, and of course, doon sa nakalatag na seguridad ay hindi ito madadagdagan. At kung madagdagan ma'am, sabi, sabi nga natin eh, sana kaunti lang at hindi natin nakakailanganin pa na magdagdag pa ng additional puwersa. 
Colonel Fajardo attributed the low number of election-related incidents to the cooperation of the community and security forces. Malaking bagay, ma'am, yung, yung community nandiyan, nag-report sa atin. At syempre, ma'am, hindi natin pwedeng kalimutan yung mga uh, media practitioners natin. Kayo po, ma'am, na kayo rin na nagsisilbing mata at tayo na natin kapag kami mga nababalitaan tayong ika nga mga pending, ika nga imminent danger and threats ay napaparating kaagad sa mga security sectors at yun ay nagagawan kaagad, ma'am, ng paraan para huwag matuloy kung ano man yung mga nakaampang panganib o gulo doon sa lugar na yun. Earlier, the PNP has recommended to place 114 cities and municipalities under the red category of the election areas of concern or the highest alert level under the new system implemented by the Commission on Election. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The ruling Partido Democratico Filipino Lakas ng Bayan Kusi Wing says there is a chance that President Rodrigo Duterte may attend the joint rallies of the PDP Laban and Uniteam Alliance. Meanwhile, presidential candidate Bongbong Marcos Jr. encourages their supporters to get booster shots against COVID-19. Nel Maribohok will tell us why live. Yes, Nell. Good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. The PDP Laban Kusi faction has announced that the political party of President Rodrigo Duterte and the unity of Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio will soon unite in campaign rallies. In a Facebook post, the ruling party teased that the president could make an appearance during their sorties. However, they they did not announce when and where the event could take place. Also, the officials of the PDP Laban Party and the camp of Marcos Jr. has yet to confirm the same joint campaign rallies. President Duterte has endorsed his daughter's vice daughter's vice presidential bid. However, the chief executive maintained he will remain neutral as far as the presidential race is concerned. Meanwhile, the BBM Sara unit team returned to Mindanao for their campaign rally. Marcos Jr. addresses the crowd in Lano del Norte and urged them to get booster shots against COVID-19. Alam naman po natin na tayo ngayon ay maraming hinaharap na problema. Nasa crisis pa rin tayo ng pandemia. At uh, mukhang uh, hindi pa matapos-tapos dahil meron na namang bumabalik. Na sinasabi, kaya papayuhan ko rin po kayo, kayong mga qualified na magpa-booster shot, magpa-booster shot na kayo. Tara, hindi na natin kailangan isipin ang mga lockdown dahil ayaw na natin magka-lockdown dahil masyado nang naghihirap ang tao. The unit team also conducted a rally today in Cagayan de Oro City together with their senatorial boss. That is our update. Back to you, Will. Yes, uh... Thank you, Nel Maribohok, reporting live. Presidential candidate Vice President Lenny Robredo goes back to Occidental Mindoro weeks before the elections. The independent candidate will also be visiting again some provinces in Calabarzon, the country's most vote rich region. This report will tell us why. Presidential candidate Vice President Lenny Robredo once again visited her Mindoreño supporters as she goes back to Occidental Mindoro. The Lenny Kiko team first visited the province on April 6 as part of the campaign trail. There, she vowed to Mindoreños to address the high electricity costs and power interruptions. She also made a commitment to invest on improving internet connectivity under her administration should she win the presidency. Robredo was supposed to attend a campaign rally of gubernatorial candidate Ace Durano and Cebu Vice Governor Hilario Junjun Davide in Talisay City, Cebu this afternoon but got cancelled. In a Facebook post on Monday night, Davide apologized to supporters of Robredo as she won't be able to attend following the announcement of support of Durano's party Partido Pilipino sa Pagbabago to presidential candidate Bong Bong Marcos. The Lenny Kiko team will be visiting the province of Bulacan tomorrow. Robredo is also set to visit once again the vote-rich provinces of Laguna, Batangas, and Cavite this week. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
The Supreme Court denies the motions for reconsideration filed by several petitioners assailing the constitutionality of the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. Dante Amento tells us why lie. Yes, uh, Dante, go ahead. Good evening, William. The High Court has upheld its decision promulgated last December 7, 2021 to declare Republic Act 11479 or the Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 as constitutional. Only two parts of the provisions of the law were struck down for vagueness. In an advisory release today, the Supreme Court denied with finality the six motions motions for reconsideration filed by the petitioners due to lack of substantial issues and arguments. The SE added the members of the AND Bank maintain their votes in their previous ruling, which was penned by former Senior Associate Justice Rosemary Carandang being the ponente of the case. The High Court is set to upload their, in their website a copy of the resolution denying the MRs. Meanwhile, the Free Legal Assistance Group or FLAG, one of the petitioners maintains their position that there are provisions of the law which are vague and dangerous and the denial of their motions only encouraged them to be vigilant for possible impact of the law in our fundamental rights. The National Union of People's Lawyers or NUPL, also one of the petitioners, hopes that the law will be either struck down or amended in due time. Though downhearted, they are uh, prepared to accept and respect the court's decision. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Dante Amento, for that live report from Quezon City. The Okta research team warns that a resurgence of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines can happen anytime. However, this can be preventable as well as manageable. Aiko Miguel reports why. COVID-19 infections in the Philippines could hit 5,000 to 10,000 daily. This may happen once new Omicron subvariants and sublineages enter the country. Okta Research Fellow Professor Guido David said, the Philippines' COVID-19 situation is similar to South Africa and India. They have experienced a spike in cases in a span of one week due to Omicron subvariants and the sublineage BA.2. However, Professor Guido said, the resurgence will not be as serious compared to the last few months when the Omicron variant of concern hit the Philippines. Uh, hindi natin nakikita na baka maging kasing taas ng naging surge natin yung January. Pero at the same time, itong surge sa South Africa at sa um, India, bago pa lang sila. So monitor pa natin kasi kung maging mataas sila, magiging concerned din tayo dahil baka maging ganyan din yung mangyayari sa Philippines. Siguro mga um, 5,000 cases per day, tatas pa din po, tumaas tayo, 5,000 or even 10,000 cases per day. Uh, so far, hindi pa naman natin nakikita na baka umabot ng kasing lala nung January. Okta Research Fellow Professor Ranjit Rai also said they are not recommending the implementation of a new strict lockdown in the country. And we're trying to uh, pro provide data to say that there is a possibility of an uptick and maybe a surge. Wala akong recommendation ng Okta to lockdown. What may happen in the next few weeks is manageable po given our, our existing uh, capabilities. The group reminds the public to continue to adhere to safety and health protocols against COVID-19, especially by wearing face masks. Okta also emphasized the importance of ramping up the booster vaccination coverage in the country to prevent further transmission and emergence of new COVID-19 variants. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Several local government units in Metro Manila started giving its residents their second COVID-19 booster shot after the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Health gave the green light for its administration to immunocompromised individuals. J.P. Duñez reports. Immunocompromised individuals queue for their second booster shots in different vaccination sites in Metro Manila. In San Juan City, 300 individuals with underlying conditions were given their fourth shot. Ako may maintenance, ano po? Pero tinuloy ko pa rin, first, second ko. 
So, pinasabi ko naman sa mga kasama ko na magpabako na kayo, walang masama mangyayari. At alam ng mga doktor yan, hindi naman tayo papayuan ng doktor na kung masama yan, hindi ba? Kaya lang, may mga yung tao, may mga sakit na, eh natatakot. Pero hindi pa rin kayo dapat matakot kasi meron naman tayong doktor na nag, mag, ano, mag, mag-examine kung sakali hindi tayo po pwede. Ay talagang gusto ko. Wala nagpimilit sa akin. Dahil alam kong yan iwi for the good of my health. Kaya kahit bigyan kami ng every three months, punta ako dito. Magpapabooster ako. San Juan LGU admits that convincing residents to get the second booster dose will be quite challenging as the public becomes complacent due to the easing of restrictions. The city aims to maximize their house-to-house and drive-through vaccination to double the number of those who will get boosted with COVID-19 vaccines. Ito nga po, second booster shot na. Ngunit yung iba, yung first booster, hindi pa ho nila nakukuha. Kung ikukumpara ninyo yung fully vaccinated dati na 262% versus yung mga nakatanggap ng booster at 96%, malaki pa rin ang discrepancy. Kaya huwag natin isipin na dahil fully vaccinated tayo ay tama na yon Dahil ang epekto po ng bakuna ay nawawala rin pag dumadaan ang mga buwan. Meanwhile, the city of Manila also started their second booster vaccination today. Vaccinees are free to choose their preferred vaccine brand. In Muntinlupa City, walk-ins are allowed in all vaccination sites, while in Marikina and Pasig City, the booster vaccination started yesterday. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the health department is looking into reports that a hospital in the national capital region mistakenly administered the second booster shot against the coronavirus to healthcare workers and senior citizens who are not immunocompromised. In a statement, the DOH said the hospital management had explained that they unintentionally misinterpreted guidelines. The Health Technology Assessment Council, or HTAC, has completed recommendations for immunocompromised and not yet for other sectors. Health authorities are currently coordinating with the relevant health care facilities and vaccination sites to prevent further instances of these events. Uh, medyo na mix up sila doon sa kona FDA at saka yung mga basta guidelines na nabigyan na rin yung health workers na kahit hindi immunocompromised. Of course, na remind lang sila na After easing travel restrictions, the number of international arrivals in the Philippines have reached more than 300,000, according to the Department of Tourism. Aileen Seruda reports. The tourism industry is slowly recovering from the difficulties faced amid the COVID-19 pandemic. From February 10 to April 25, na surpass na natin yung 300,000 mark. We received about 313,050 international arrivals. Based on the data of the tourism department, most foreign tourists came from the United States, Canada, and South Korea. Aside from international arrivals, domestic trips also increased. DOT Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat explains there are revenge travels where families go on vacation after almost two years of staying at home. After two years, ngayon lang talaga sila lumalabas. Eh, alam mo naman, Filipinos, we really travel as a family. Mm-hmm. And ang maganda pa dito, hindi lamang uh, uh, buong pamilya, they stay longer. Mm-hmm. So dati, kunyari weekend lang, minsan one week na sila nagsistay so they can spend time with their family. Even though the number of international and domestic trips are increasing, they have not yet reached the number of arrivals before the pandemic. Based on the tourism department, 8 million foreign tourists arrived before the pandemic, while around 100 million domestic trips were recorded in 2019. Despite lesser restrictions and low COVID-19 cases, Secretary Puyat said the department continues to coordinate with the Department of the Interior and local government to monitor the strict compliance of the health and safety protocols. Pagdating sa accommodation establishments, mga hotels, mga resorts, kahit na yung mga 
kahit mabuhay accommodation, we are very strict na dapat sumusunod sa health and safety guidelines mm -hmm. na ginawa ng Department of Tourism together with the Department of Health. The department also warns they will issue show cause orders to establishments violating any implemented guidelines. The DOT also reminds the public to continue adhering to the minimum health and safety protocols to avoid the spread of COVID-19. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration expanded the approval of the COVID-19 treatment Baclari or Remdesivir to include pediatric patients as young as 28 days of age and older, weighing at least 3 kilograms with positive results of direct SARS-CoV-2 viral testing. To be eligible for the treatment, FDA said children must be hospitalized or have mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms and are high at risk for progression to severe COVID-19, if, even if they are not hospitalized. This is by far the first approved COVID-19 treatment for children less than 12 years of age. As a result of today's approval action, the agency also revoked the emergency use authorization for remdesivir that previously covered the pediatric population. Before, remdesivir was only approved to treat certain adults and pediatric patients with COVID-19. Russia continues to advance towards central and western Ukraine, destroying almost 60 targets in its latest strike. Ia Devera will tell us why live. Good evening, Ia. Good evening, LC. Russia attacked multiple railway stations and fuel installations in west and central Ukraine from unleashing more weaponry for the war supplied by Ukraine's western allies. According to the head of Ukraine's state railway, five stations were hit with one worker deceased. Western city Lviv and central Venetia region, where most Ukrainians have fled, were also bombarded, killing, killing at least five people and destroying destroying several fuel depots there. Moscow stated that they will now advance to capture Donbass, a Russian-speaking industrial region in the east of Ukraine. Meanwhile, a joint investigation team will be joined by the International Criminal Court's chief prosecutor to investigate the alleged war crimes committed by Russia in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.S. will be sending more weaponry to Ukraine, which U.S. Secretary Anthony Blinken stated is allowing Ukraine to succeed after two months of war. Elsie? Ia, are there plans around evacuating the many civilians put at risk with these constant strikes from Russia? LC Ukraine continues to ask for a UN humanitarian aid to evacuate the thousands of civilians who have sought shelter at the Mariupol steelworks. Russia is said to have offered to open a humanitarian corridor for them to leave, but for now Ukraine has assessed this route to be unsafe. Back to you, LC. Thank you, Ia De Vera, for that live report. <music> Meanwhile, the world's oldest living person, Kane Tanaka of Japan, who has lived a remarkable 119 years of age, has just died. Ryuji Sasaki reports why live. <music> yes, Ryuji? Good evening, Elsie. Kane Tanaka's family announced in a tweet that she had been in and out of the hospital recently because of her frequent sickness. Before her passing, Kane Tanaka said that she was able to reach the age of 119 because of the support of many people. Her death was confirmed by a senior gerontology consultant who has also helped confirm Kane's, Kane's record as the oldest living person and oldest female person living in 2019. Guinness World Records, who named her the title in 2019, are saddened by the news and send their deepest condolences to Kane's family. Kane Tanaka was born in 1903 in Kyushu Island, Japan. She survived cancer surgery twice. The latest was when she was 103 years old due to the colorectal cancer. The Super Centenarian has also survived a multitude of historical events, including the two world wars and 1918 Spanish flu and COVID-19. 
She was selected as one of the torchbearers for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, but was, but was called off due to the coronavirus. Also in that same year, her great-granddaughter set up a Twitter account to celebrate Kana's life as a super centenarian. Her last years were spent eating sweets, doing math, and remaining positively curious, according to her family. Elsie? Thank you, Ryu Jisasaki, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. And for job seekers out there, the Department of Labor and Employment will resume its face-to-face -face or on-site jobs fair nationwide on Labor Day, two years after it was prohibited due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Rosalie Koss has the story. The Department of Labor and Employment has prepared 24 job fair sites nationwide on May 1, Labor Day. 64,485 jobs will be offered during the 120th Labor Day Job and Business Fair. The number includes 52,237 for local and 12,248 for overseas employment. Kailangan pa rin po natin na mag-create ng more employment opportunities para sa ating mga kababayan. At yung pong makikreate po natin na employment ay pinahangad uh, po natin na masustain. The jobs fair on May 1, 2022 will be hybrid according to Dole. Majority of this will be done face-to-face -face, while in other areas, the hiring will be virtually. It's hybrid po. Uh, may areas pa po tayo na meron pong online pero at the same time, uh, physical din po. So we're, we're accommodating both. The top five local vacancies are production or machine operator, customer service representative, collection specialist, Retail, sales agent, promodizer, and market research interviewer. While nurse or nurse aide, waiter, waitress, food server, household service worker, kitchen help, assistant cook, and salesperson are the top five jobs abroad. These jobs are particularly in Middle East, Europe, and Asia. The main event of the Labor Day celebration will be held in Kingsborough International Convention Center in San Fernando City, Pampanga. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte has been invited to lead the inauguration and opening of the first hospital for migrant workers in San Fernando, Pampanga on the same day. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And those are the reasons behind the news April 26, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.